Hi guys, this is really late, but I had so much work that I simply could not find the time to make this video. Guys, I hate adulthood. This is the ghettoest of all the hoods. Can somebody please draw me a map back to childhood? I cannot take this whole being an adult thing. But anyways, enough of my whining and complaining. Let us get to Skate Canada. Okay, guys, I could not find the short program for the pairs anywhere. The only um, short program that I saw was Deanna and Maxine's, and that was from a, um, a fan cam. For some reason, the entire pair short program is nowhere to be found, and I really did look for it. But from that fan cam, what I did see was Deanna Stiletto the Duke and Maxime the Shop looking fabulous. From what I saw of that short program, they are here to get theirs. They are not playing. Now, my recap is just going to be based on the um, free program, which I did see. Um... So my prediction was a little off. Of course, Deanna, she, the queen, the diva, Stiletta, the Duke, and Maxime Deschamps won this. It was not even a question. We already knew she was coming for her crown, and she snatched it. 40 looks good on Deanna. Yes, this is what I want to see in skating. Not little girls breaking at 17, retiring at 18, not able to bend, not able to touch their toes, not able to turn completely to the left. No, what I want to see are the Deanna stories, 40 at the peak of her chosen profession. That long program, good, Dracula, I was about it. They were in character, the, the, the speed, the lifts. Diana was giving us positions for days. The throws look good, the twists look good. This, this, this is a program that was well choreographed by a choreographer that was not choreographing for their own ego, but to showcase the athlete in front of them. Every movement made sense. It wasn't wasted. I love this long program. Honestly, they were in a competition all by themselves. Everyone else was doing one thing, and Deanna and Maxine were in a field all by themselves. With the Japanese team, Riku and Ryuchi, being out, Diana and Maxime are now a front runner for that world title. And I'm excited by that. I am excited to see what this showdown is going to be like. Um, in second place, and pleasantly surprised, and I always love being surprised, um, was Maria Pelova and um Alexi Shevesko. I think I think maybe. Really good free program. Landed every element to the best of their ability. They came. They didn't really think they had a chance at a medal, but yet they delivered the performance of a lifetime. It was wonderful to see. This is not a team that was on my radar, but they're on my radar now. The the young Hungarian team. I'm, I'm going to start now looking to see what what possibility they have at European. Could they manage to squeeze on the podium there at European when I was predicting maybe an Italian sweep? We would have to see. Or a German sweep. Maybe there's a Hungarian that's going to get in there. And then, speaking of the Italian, um, Lucretia Bacardi and Matteo Grizzi, I thought they were going to be the silver medal here. I don't know what happened. Um, the the I mean, again, they're a new team. They're gelling. They're growing. There are some growing pains that they're going through. So I would imagine that is what's going on here. But still, this wasn't an awful outing for them. This was a really good outing for them. Um, and then I was so happy to see Anastasia um, Galubeva and Hector Moore, Hector G. Moore do so much better here than they had at their last outing. I feel like it's really difficult to go from, you know, junior to senior 
and go into that second year of being a senior and trying to deal with your nerves in the competition. So I feel like that's what they're learning to do is try to get a handle on their nerves. Um, and those were like the, the main teams that I was looking at. And then we got to men. Oh my God, you guys know this broke my heart. This broke my heart. Starting right off the bat with my John Woo Cha, my Cha baby. The short program was fine. You know, it was much better than his first outing. He seemed like he was overcoming the demon of the triple axel. And then we got to the long program. And guys, I don't know what's going on with Cha. Is the changing from Brian Oyster to the new judge, to the new coach, that much of an impact? Is it a change in his mental game? Is it a change in his training Oh my God. So he's definitely not making it to the final because a ninth place finish, even if he wins a gold medal, he's not going to have enough points to make it to the Grand Prix final. I'm just wondering, is this going to be a continuation or is he going to be able to get things back together and come back for like four continent and worlds? Oh, please, you could do this, cha, 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 you could do this. I believe in you. Um, For me, the two performances of the night are not even medalists. They were from Mark um, Gordowski and Mikhail um, Shador Shadorov. I'm really, really bad at names. And thank you guys so much, everyone who is been trying to help me with my pronunciation. I really do appreciate it. I am working on better pronunciation, but I've always been bad at names, always, but I am working on it. So thank you all you guys for helping me. Now, I know Mark doesn't have the technical power of some of the other men who are competing here, but what he does have is consistency and what he does have is likability. There is something very likable about this skater. This, he, he's not an over-the-top performer, but he still perform. He's musical. There's something I like about him. And this free program, he did to the best of his ability. Then Mikhail, I feel like he was just underscore. This is a very well-balanced skater. There's no wow factor to him, but there's nothing to greatly dislike. And he came out here and he gave us two clean programs. And I don't know why the judges are not going for him. And then, of course, you know, I had um, Kazuki Tomoto right up there on my podium in second place. Unfortunately, the long program got away from him a little bit. But again, I'm not too concerned because this is a very long season and this is a building process. So the fact that, you know, um, Timono is doing better this season than he did last season for me is already a win. So I think for Tomoto, it's probably better for him to pace himself so that he could peak at Japanese national and make it to that world team because we all know Japanese national men and women is going to be a complete bloodbath. Um, who did make it on the podium and he made it on the bronze medal exactly where I wanted him to be was Matteo Rizzo. Um, again, this was not a great outing. The short program was really, really rough for Matteo. But he came back in the long program. He did not give in. He continued to fight. And again, this is probably a long game for Matteo, given the fact that the next Winter Olympic is going to be in Italy. So he probably has a long game plan with that Olympic in mind. And so he's building. He's not giving up when things don't go his way. He's coming back. He's fighting. This was not his best outing, but I'm waiting to see what he does, you know, at his next Grand Prix assignment. And then I thought Kyle Muro would win this. Well, technically speaking, he, component-wise, technical-wise, he should easily have won this competition. But unfortunately, it, it wasn't his day in the short program. 
And even though he managed to win the free overall, he just didn't do enough to win the title overall. The surprise winner here for me, Sota Yamamoto. Consistency. But he, no, not even that. Those trip, him and the triple axle. If he really wants to be at the top, top tier, he's going to have to overcome his issue with that triple axle because you could see his body tense up every time he goes through that triple axle. Before he even lands, before he even goes into the triple axle, he's already projected him falling out of the triple axle which is quite you know which is quite heartbreaking because if he could just get over that I do think he could be a great you know competitor um but I was really happy for him I was really happy to see him come out here and win a medal probably didn't think he was gonna win one and I always feel like those are the best kind of medals when you don't think you're gonna win it and you come and you win it now we get to the ice dance. Ice dance mostly went as I expected with a little bit of surprise. Um, everyone here did, you know, there, there was no major mistakes. There was little mistakes here and there, but everyone did, you know, the best they could. We saw the Chinese team again, um, Shui Yang and Jiayu Lu. Again, they're coming, they, they were so on top of their games um, for the last two seasons leading to the Olympic. And I feel like they might be suffering from post-home Olympic um, syndrome because they had to be at such a high to make it to the Beijing Olympic to deliver on home ice. And I feel like now they're in a down um, trend, which is not necessarily a bad thing because you need, you need down ups and down ups and down and I feel like they're in a down state which in itself is not really a problem um I'm not a big fan of their free dance I do like the Amadeus short program only because I actually like that song and I feel like they skate to it really well um then you know we get to the top five I really thought um, Amelia Zingras and Vadim Kolesnik were going to end up on the podium here because I do feel like they are potential U.S. you know medalists at national. This team has an it factor, but unfortunately, in the rhythm dance, um, Amelia lost her footing in the twizzles. And that sort of put them in a hole and they had to dig themselves out of the hole in the free dance and they simply didn't have enough to get that out. Another surprise for me with their pewter medal is Omar Brown and Cage Brown. Guys, I am so excited for the next generation of U.S ice dancers because I can already see not only is this going to be a competition between two talented young ice team with Amelia Zingras and Vladim Kolesnik versus Oma Brown and Cage Brown, we're also going to have two masterminds of coaches going at each other. On the one hand, you're going to have Marie-France Dubry. On the other hand, you're going to have Igor Spielberg. These are two old hands. These are two people who have been around the block, who knows where the bodies are buried, who each have their own set of judges who are going to be going at each other trying to get that U.S. national title because eventually the that crowd that currently holds that higher position, they're going to retire probably after the next Olympic cycle. So that is when the, um, the um, Ona and the Cage and the Emilia and the Vladim are going to start the second round of this for the title of U.S. ice dance. And I am really looking forward to it. Again, Omar and Cage are doing such good work over with the, the team with Marie-France Dubry. Just lovely, deep edges, good speed, good push-off, just really nice team. And then the same thing can be said for Amelia and Vladim. They just have that it factor. You can't take your eyes off of them. They blend well. They match well. 
I cannot wait for this next generation. And then finally, you guys know how much I like the pairing of Alison Reed and Seleuze Ambrevilis. But I always feel like the judges are playing them. I always feel like the judges are not giving them their dues. And at long last, they have a Grand Prix medal. Congratulations, Allison and Seleuze. I could not be happier for them. I like both of their program. I always feel like this is a team that's uniquely them. They always come with something that suits them well. Even if the judges don't give them the credit, they're always there. And I feel like now they're building back up. And I'm really happy to see it. And again, this makes European that much more interesting. Now there's, there's a whole bunch of other team added to that bronze and silver medal hunt at European. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then, of course, you know, we had in the silver medal, as I was expecting them to get the silver, was Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson. Not a big fan of either of their program. Um, the sh the rhythm dance is just very basic. And then the Rocky free dance, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, they just, they've done this particular type of program better, in my opinion. And then we got to the winners here, um, Piper Gillis and Paul Paulier. So I am so conflicted, guys. I, so I like um, Piper and Paul's rhythm dance more than I like um, Madison and Evans' rhythm dance. Not that I dislike Madison and Evans. I think the Queen medley suits them well. For some reason, I'm just more drawn to Piper and Paul's rhythm dance. But at the same time, I prefer Madison and Evans' free dance over Piper and Paul's free dance. And I'm saying that having loved Piper and Paul's music, I love that Hitchcock, Hitchcock, um, you know, dark theme, the, tr the trauma, the drama, the pull, the dark shading, the high rise of the music, the intensity. I love their music choice. But I don't know why. I was just more intrigued by what Madison and Evan had to give in their free dance than I was with Piper and Paul. But again, this is just the beginning of the season, so we don't know what's going to happen. So we're going to have to wait and see. But all in all, this was a very pleasant ice dance competition for me. I, I was very, very happy. And then finally, we got to the women. Um, I'm going to go quickly over most of the women. Um, May Berenice Maté, the French skater, she's making her comeback here after a major injury. And, and you could see it both in the, the short program and in the free program. It was a struggle. It was very difficult to watch. But she must obviously love figure skating so much that she's willing to do it and come back despite all of the pain. So, you know, I'm glad she's so dedicated to her sport. Um, then, you know, Kaya Rutter. She's got the talent. She has the potential. But it's so difficult competing on home ice. It's so difficult competing from junior to senior. That's a completely different beast altogether. And for her to have to do that transition from junior to senior and then have to compete on home ice, I just don't think she's yet at the stage where she could handle the pressure. Um, La Naki Goodman. I'm always telling you guys, do not count out La. I feel like Italy is trying to build a competitive team for a medal at home. They have good ice. They have a good ice dance. They have a good pairs. They're building up the men, and what they need is a really good women to round out that team. And I feel like if Lara could get that triple toe, triple toe, she could be that for the Italians because she's tenacious. Lara, she gives you everything. Even if she doesn't have the technical abilities of some of the other competitors, she still gives you everything. Um, and then we had like star Andrew. Again, she's another skater who's coming back from injury. I feel like the short program she's usually on, but she doesn't have the stamina for the long program yet. 
Um, so we'll have to wait and see how she does throughout the season. Then we get to Audrey Chen. And I mean, I don't mean to be mean when I say this, but it just has to come out. She's a Tammy Gamble skater, and Tammy refuses to hire a jump specialist. And so despite the fact that Audrey has beautiful spin, lovely skating, nice musicality, good ice presence, her jumps are going to keep her off the podium. And that's just the reality of it until either skaters stop going to Tammy or Tammy stop teaching these pre like these under rotated tiny jumps. It's gonna have to be one or the other. Um Rinka Watanabe. I I like Rinka as a skater because she definitely has a unique point of view. You could tell she knows exactly who she is as a person and as a skater, but I still feel like it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle to get the consistency, it's a struggle to get the jumps, it's a struggle to get the packaging, to just get everything right. And she's going to have to start rapidly accelerating because, again, she is going to be competing against the Japanese ladies, and that is going to be brutal. Um, then we had Lindsay Thorngreen. I said this when they were juniors, and I'm gonna, and I said it several times, and I'm going to keep saying it. I don't understand why U.S. figure skating always put its egg into one basket. I get it. Isabel, Isabel Levito is very charismatic. She's got a lot of ice presence. She's, she's got a lot of talent, except for her jumps. And it's because she has so much talent that I'm always hopping on the jump because why would you teach such a talented skater such awful jumps? So I understand why U.S. figure skating feel the needs to put all their eggs in Isabel's basket. But at the same time, Lindsay Thorngreen, I feel in the long run, would be a good investment for U.S. figure skating. The packaging for Lindsay gets better every season. Her presentation gets better every season. Her connection to her music gets better every season. Her jump is already sound. She just needs to work on better rotation. I just don't understand why the U.S. are not backing her here. I felt like at this competition, the judges under, underscored her. They underscored her both in the short and in the free, and I don't understand why. Then we got to our pewter, Madeline Shizaw. Did I say that right? Shizaw? Madeline Shizaw. Sh Shizaw. Okay, so Madeline, we got to Madeline. That short program, the jump passages just were not working for her. Under rotation, cues, carrots, you name it, she was doing it. But Madeline came back in the free and she fought. Now, did I think she deserved the scores that she got? That's questionable. Did Skate Canada do their job? They were like, if you're going to have this event at in our backyard, we're going to push one of our ladies as hard as we can. And that's exactly what they did. And that's perfectly fine. That's what a federation is supposed to do. They're supposed to back their skater to the best of their ability. She did come back. She showed that she could overcome her nerves and compete on home ice, which is always super difficult. So it was nice to see her... Um, do that, even if I personally would have had Lindsay Thorngreen ahead of Madeline Trizard, but the judges felt differently by a minuscule amount, but it is what it is. Um, then we get to our medalists, um, Rhino Matsuki. I personally think there are a lot of music and skating that are just redundant and overused. And the Moulin Rouge when will I? I think that's one of those songs. But having said that, she delivered it so well. She made it feel refreshing. Every position was lovely. The jump's not 100% there yet, but there was something so well put together. She's musical. She's got a personality on the ice. She's got beautiful landings on some of her jumps, her position, her extension. Just all around lovely skater. Again, her free program, an overused piece of music. But again, Rhino brought her own sense of her to that program, to that overly used um, program. I feel like with better 
programs with better packaging. We have a contender here. We have potential here. And again, Japanese national, the bloodbath is going to be real. And then we have our little fighter, our little street fighter, Cheon Kim. She doesn't, her jumps are tiny. Her jumps are tiny. She doesn't get a lot of height, you know, in the air, over the ice. But what she does have is a fast rotation. She spins so fast. What she does have is consistency. Her jumps are mostly clean, even if they're small. There's something just interesting about Cheyenne. I like watching her. She's such a tiny little dynamite. I, when she gets on the ice, you're into the program. You're into her. She captivates you. There is something here that I really like about Cheyenne. I was very glad that she won the silver medal here, and hopefully she'll do even better at her next um, Grand Prix. And of course, our winner here, no question asked, was Miss Kali. I'm going for my third, third world title, Sakamoto. Guys, ladies, everyone, I am so excited because all of the contenders are coming out and they are delivering. Last week, Luna Hendricks came in the short program she delivered and the long program she delivered. Whether you like, whether you like the program or not, her jumps were solid. Her spins, she delivered what she needed to do. Kawi came out and she did the same thing. She delivered what she needed to do. I feel like these women understand they are being given an opportunity, a rare chance to be at the top of their field, at the top of their games, and they're going for it. Last year, Luna could have easily won that European title, and she let it slip out of her finger. I feel like she does not want to do that again this year. Last year, Kauri also could not win the Grand Prix final. She does not want to see that happen again this year. And they both want to go and do their best at Worlds. And I'm so excited that all of these contenders are coming out and they are delivering to their best of their ability. I, I love this. I know there's a lot of people who do not enjoy skating right now because of the absence of the Russians. I'm not one of those people. I love skating right now. I love the, the, the mystery of it. I, I love the fact that everyone is being judged somewhat fairly. I love that someone unexpected could get on the podium, that it's not pre-prescribed. I love all of that aspect of skating right now. And I'm really looking forward to see who is going to really take the opportunity in front of them and make the best of it. Anyhow, that was my recap of Skate Canada, and I would love to hear what you guys thought. Let me know in the comments.